So in the last video, I cruised in all weathers to attend my final event of the year as the pirate boat, and that was the Huddlesford Heritage Gathering. And it was an absolutely fantastic weekend. But now with all the events out of the way, it's time to head back up north for winter. Yesterday, I was halfway through an engine service and we're missing one of the filters, it was the wrong one. So I'm not able to start my engine to move from this space because I've got no filter. <laughs> so I'm going to get tugged off by this lovely boat here and move to the towpath side. So that, um, yeah, we'll finish the service later on today or tomorrow. But it just means, yeah, I can't start my engine to move. Oh, sorry. Guarantee every time we try to turn around, we can get you. I know, it's, I mean, it's very windy here today. Quite gusty, about 37 mile an hour gusts. It's just the joys of boating and everyone's rallied in and helping each other and it's bloody lovely. So with my mate Nicky at the front of the boat to guide that part and then all the other boaters pushing me off the bank as well as being tugged, we made it to the towpath. So that's it. All the boaters came to our aid and now we're moored here just for now, a couple of days. I, I have so many bad orders to make up, it's unreal. So I'm gonna get on with all those now. And then I'm gonna be starting to head off back up north for winter. So every morning my kitchen turns into this, my little badge workshop. So once I've done all the designing, the printing and the cutting, I then do all the making. So alongside all my boat crew badges and my school orders and festival badges, I also, this time of year now, start doing my naughty Christmas range. And that keeps me busy over winter and also helps with all the extra fuel costs and coal and all that that you get this time of year. And the best thing about this is I'm working from home, my boat, and I can do it anywhere I am, as long as I can get on my bike or get myself to a post office. So we're just waiting now for my engine service to be finished and then we can get cruising and I'm going to be travelling again with Nikki up to Great Haywood where she'll be turning left and I'll be continuing up north. Come on Bonds, time to go for a wee. Just a quick one. Bonnie hates the rain. She hates it when it's raining outside. She doesn't like the feeling of the wet grass on her paws or the mud. But we're getting there. She's getting so much better. And for those that don't know, Bonnie's a little rescue dog. I've only had her four months or so. And she is a bugger with other dogs. We are working on her social skills. When a dog goes past or anything, she's quite reactive. She launches and barks. She's had a few little training sessions. So she is getting better. And we're using various techniques to improve this. But yeah, we'll get there, won't we? But she's a gorgeous, gorgeous, lovely little happy dog. She really is, and she's very loving. And that's the main thing, isn't it? Eh? And the festival last week did the world of good because there were lots of dogs there. And you were very good, weren't you? Eh? Come on then, let's go outside. So I'm still moored in this spot here. And Nikki's got a car, so I'm gonna go and meet her now because she's gonna take me to pets at home because Bonnie needs new clothes. <laughs> yeah, she hates being outside in the rain. And if it's windy and she feels the cold as well, she shivers when we're outside. So I'm gonna get some jumpers and a coat. So we headed to the nearest Pets at Home store so Bonnie could get some winter gear. And the brilliant thing about Pets at Home is you can try on all the clothes. Now this one's more like it. Fur coat, no knickers. Oh, how pretty are you? And a quick walk round to check she's comfortable in it. Nice, we'll have that one. That's that's going in the basket. Now for the jumpers. Oh, Papa. Bonnie, how gorgeous do you? <laughs> Oh, look how gorgeous you are. What do you want, Bonnie? You can have anything you want. What do you want? Oh, nothing. So 
so that's it she's just cost me an absolute fortune but she's got two jumpers and a coat a few treats and a kong two hours later so obviously you can hear i've got a working engine again jason's just left he's had a full service no airlock so that means now tomorrow i can set off back on my journey up north and i need to get cracking because all the winter stoppages are going to be coming into effect soon and i don't want to be stuck the wrong side of a stoppage yeah so i'm going to set off tomorrow So we're approaching the autumn and winter time, all the muddy towpaths. Anyway, my boat's working now, my service is finished and I've got to reverse round this bend under this bridge to the winding hole to turn just there. So that's going to be fun. I've got Nikki as crew on the front, so if a boat does go close to other boats, she can push off. So reversing a narrow boat, as I've said before, is quite hard work because you don't have any steering in reverse. So there's a lot of reversing and going forwards and faffing about, and it takes a long time. And over here, it was quite shallow, so I was really struggling. But eventually I made it to the winding hole, turned the boat round, dropped Nikki off so she could go and get her boat and then we were on our way. So I have mentioned this before but when you live on a boat you tend to choose an area to spend winter and the main reason for that is lots of the canals get shut over winter well the locks do lots of locks shut down for maintenance things like that so I've spent like last winter I did it on the Langothlin the year before I did the Mac and the Peak Forest I've spent winter in Wolverhampton I've spent it on the Erewash near Nottingham I've spent it in Hebden Bridge and Tomlinden on the Rochdale Canal so this year I want to spend it near my parents. I haven't been on home waters for over 18 months now. So that's near Anderton, Acton Bridge, Northwich area. And I've also got my little camper van, remember, and I've only used it for my DJ gigs this year. I've hardly been away in it, so I'd like to go away a little bit in my camper van as well. So that's one of the reasons why I'm heading up north now, is to try and get there before I get stuck somewhere. Oh, it's joys where our journey starts now, heading back up north. I don't know where Nikki is. The thing is with Nikki, She's like, she just, you lose her from sight and the next minute she's virtually taking you roughly from behind. So you've got to be careful, got to keep looking back at your old times. So because myself and Nikki are both single-handed boaters, we thought we'd both cruise together as we're both at the moment going the same way. And it's always much more fun when you're traveling with another boat. Quite a few nipples on this bridge, isn't there? They apparently hold the bridge together, as everyone tells me every time I mention the nipples. Yeah, they're keeping it, they're called bridge ties. I call them nipples. What do you call them? There's a dog coming, let's see how Bonnie is with this dog. Oh, you coming for a treat? Very good, don't think she's noticed. Very good, Bonnie. 
Very good. Oh. See, sometimes she's really good, and other times she's a bloody nightmare. But these treats that they really work in, it does make a difference if you use cheap treats or use good quality ones in her distraction techniques. So I'm loving this cruise today because the sun's shining and not only is it a cruise from getting me from A to B, but also whilst I'm cruising, I'm charging all my bank of batteries. They're all charging. I've got my washing machine on, so all my washing's doing. There's a water point at Bradley, so I can top up with water there, get rid of my rubbish, get rid of my toilet. So by the time I've done all those jobs and back on my way, everything will be done on the boat. All my batteries will be full. The tanks will be emptied that need to be, and the tanks will be full that need to be. And I'll be in a new location. Yeah, what more do you need? So just took all my rubbish, currently filling up with water and then we're going to crack on up two or three locks and then more up for the day. I think that's the plan today now. You forget how long it takes just to fill your water tanks and that. And there's two of us, two boats. Yeah, so we've been here for about an hour. So there's only a very small lock landing here at this lock so I've managed to get myself moored and Nick is hovering about so Nick will go straight in this lock but there's a lot of boats going the same way today. Thank you, very much. Thank you love. And once we'd got Nicky up in the lock it was my turn. There's three boats in front of us going up, then there's us two, and then there's one behind, all going the same way. And nothing coming down. <laughs> the good thing about us helping each other up these locks means Bonnie can stay on the roof. Yeah, I still don't trust her enough to be off doing the locks and her staying here. But with me being here with her, she's fine. It's only when Bonnie sees another dog that she starts to react. So we both stopped there at the top of Fradley. I've hung we washing out, took Bonnie on a big walk. And we're going to try and crack on. We've made a decision. We want to get through this next lock and uh, get to Handsacre because there's a chippy there and we both fancy chippy tea. So we're quite lucky on this lock because there are boats waiting to come down as well. It does make it so much easier when you've got boats going in both directions because otherwise you're having to reset the lock each time getting the water levels equal which is like doing the lock twice as well as wasting water. So that's the last lock of the day done now and somebody's helping Nicky up once the boat's gone down which is great so I'll crack on now. It's chippy tea. That's the only thing that's motivating us now. Otherwise, we would have just moored here. But yeah, we've got it in the heads. We've got to have a chippy tea. It's amazing how food and things like that are such a motivator, aren't they? Yeah, all I can think about, I can taste it. And you'll have a nice sausage, won't you, Bonnie? Bonnie loves sausage. <laughs> So we're nearly there, not long now to look and moor up. I just wanted to show you this, as well as my books, which I use, I also use this free app, it's called Open Canal Map. So this is an iPhone, I think they do it for Android. But if you look at the blue dot, 
Scotland, you can see, that's where I am. So I'm only a bridge, a couple of bridges from where I want to moor. So it's brilliant, it's like a GPS and you just follow that. So it's been a really long day today. I've cruised for about eight hours in total and it did take a long time on those locks. Yes, I'm ready to moor up. I don't like doing long days. <laughs> Which means now, tomorrow, I've got to work all day. Because I tried to cruise for a few hours in an afternoon and work in the morning, but I've cruised all day today. So I've earned that chippy tea and a rum. Yeah, I'm gonna have a massive rum when I moor up, I tell you. I was just going to moor myself up there but there's two dogs on the towpath with no owner and they're not on a lead and they probably belong to one of the boats but because she's so reactive I can't risk it so I'm trying to move a bit further on here and hopefully I can get moored up she gets the backs up you know the most loveliest gorgeous dogs are on leads and Bonnie's like <laughs> at them and then they're like <laughs> back but at least the owners then have them on a lead and can pull them back but I always feel panicky. You're a little buggy, you, aren't you? So both myself and Nikki have got quite deep drafted boats. And as you can see here, I can't get anywhere near the bank. And Nikki's also struggling there by the looks of it. But because I've got a big one, yeah, a big propeller, if I do rev it to try and get into the bank, the prop wash pushes me further out. And as a single hander, I need to get off the stern. So the easiest way to do this is just to make a leap of faith and pull it in out of gear. And she tends to come in much easier that way. It's not always good having a big one, you know. So I've just moored up here now and I can smell the chippy from here. There's also a pub. Not that we can afford to go into pubs, but there's a chippy and that's the main thing. It's just around that corner, which is fantastic. So this will do us now for a few days. I was going to moor a bit further back, but yeah, them dogs off a lead. It, they might be the most gorgeousest, loveliest, whatever dogs, but Bonnie is a bugger. She gets stressed as well. When there's dogs about, she gets really stressed. So, so yeah, but here's fine, it's fine. So we've just come back from the chippy. There was a massive queue. So that's a good sign of a good chippy, isn't it, Nick? Bloody hope so. Yes, yeah, so we've got fish and chips. We're going to scoff these now, have a big rum, and then hopefully tomorrow afternoon or the next day, we're going to crack on because we've got to watch all these stoppages winter stoppages are all coming into play now and we just don't want to get stuck so here i've got a bit of fish under there some curry sauce some nice chips and that green stuff loads of people have asked what's my green stuff i have that's a northern thing and it's mushy peas we like mushy peas with everything yeah pie and peas chips and peas fish peas and a nice big sausage and peas Woohoo! so it's going dark now nikki's gone so i'm going to pour myself a massive drink and take you in the rear entrance so matthew gave me this at the festival it's from the balls up distillery so thank you very much and also a massive thank you to this week's pirate crew your name should be appearing here so thank you so much <laughs> So this is the Kong I got from Pets at Home. It's brilliant. You fill it with treats. You can even put some doggy peanut butter over the top to make it harder, more to lick. But she loves it, keeps her busy for ages. <laughs> yeah, anyway, we're trying this. This is a, a slow gin. Yeah, something a bit different. So cheers, everyone. Woohoo! Mmm. Oh, it's nice. Very sweet. Very sweet. It is nice. Warms the cockles. Okay, so this ditty, it's, when I read this ditty on the YouTube comments, 
I just thought, wow, you really have been watching these videos. It's fantastic. And it's from Diane Donnelly. And it goes a little something like this. Getting smacked in the face by an overgrown shrub. Unable to walk straight after a night in the pub. Getting jizzed on in locks and pooed on in tunnels. Being hit by ropes and slipping on gunnels. Dropping a GoPro so deep in the silt. Getting the wrong wench stuck right to the hilt. Getting wet and cold when it's pouring with rain. Bumping into walls like Calamity Jane. Getting stiff nipples and crazy hat hair. Cruising the waters without knowing where. Cocking up manoeuvres with virtual ease. A 64 point turn when there's a bit of a breeze. Hands down the weed hatch whilst clearing the prop. Cleaning dirty solar panels with Nicky's borrowed mop. Pushing the granny trolley up a great big hill. Waiting three hours for the water tank to fill. Emptying the Elson and getting rid of poo. And getting moister and wetter than a mermaid's foo. Slipping and sliding along the muddy towpath. No matter the weather, Heidi's up for a laugh. All these things and more Captain Heidi has done. But who the heck cares when there's bottles of rum? With plenty of laughs and bloopers galore, I beg you, Pirate Queen Heidi, please give us loads more. Arr. Oh, you know what, Diane, that has made my year. I just think that ditty is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help. Subscribe down below. And before I go, just a massive shout out to all my patrons, all my people that buy me a coffee, and for all you guys for watching. Thank you so much, and cheers. Woohoo!